Alright guys, it is a fine summer morning here in the end times in the paradise of the Green Mountains in Vermont where I could just sit here and just pretend like it is an absolutely perfect day on the planet here in the end times on this Wednesday morning, June 27, 2018. But no, I have to ruin this beautiful day by diving into the doomosphere of the mainstream media to see what's going on on the rest of this planet. And the, uh, let me go get my, go get my two buttons here. Oh, we're going to start off in the golden state of California. Guess which button I'm getting ready to push. U.S. judge throws out climate change lawsuits against big oil. No shit, Sherlock. You know, I've been talking about this story. But how, how many months? Uh, and here we go. <clears throat> a U.S. judge who held a hearing about climate change that received widespread attention ruled Monday that Congress and the President, Congress and the President, were best suited to address the contribution of fossil fuels to global warming. <clears throat> throwing out lawsuits that sought to hold big oil companies liable for the Earth's changing environment. No shit, Sherlock. Noting that the world has also benefited significantly from oil and other fossil fuels, the world, meaning humans, have benefited significantly from oil and other fossil fuels. No shit, Sherlock. Judge William Alsop said questions about how to balance the worldwide positives of the energy against its role in global warming demand the expertise of our environmental agencies, our diplomats, our executive, meaning Donald Trump, and at least the Senate. Oh, come on now. That ain't even bullshit. That's horseshit. The ruling came in lawsuits brought by San Francisco and Oakland that accused Chevron, ExxonMobil, ConocoPhillips, BP, and Royal Dutch Shell of long knowing that fossil fuels pose serious risks to the environment, but still promoted them as environmentally responsible. There you go. Alright. Uh, let's go from California down to Florida. The, from the Golden State to the Sunshine State where you know, I still plan to buy a little wintertime refuge to live out uh, the end times in South Florida, but maybe I should change those plans. Here is the latest from The Guardian. <clears throat> Florida is about to be wiped off the map from rising seas. No shit, Sherlock. You know, the whole question is about. Sea level rises are not some distant threat. For many Americans, they are very real. In an extract from her chilling new book, Rising, Elizabeth Rush details how the U.S. coastline will be radically transformed in the coming years. Uh, sounds like I need to uh, maybe put... Elizabeth Rush on the list of people to to interview. Uh, anyway, uh, this is you know one of these one of these long 
rambling Guardian uh, feature articles that uh, takes forever to actually talk about uh, the, the meat of the problem. Uh, good God. Uh, so anyway, I think we get it. Uh, <clears throat> let's see. Let's just... Okay, that's just one quote <clears throat> from this new book, Rising. Greenland is currently calving chunks of ice so massive they produce earthquakes up to six and seven on the Richter scale. There was not much noticeable ice melt before the 90s, but now it accelerates every year exceeding all predictions. It will likely cause a pulse of meltwater into the oceans. Would you get back to center stage, please, little dog? Get back to center stage. Thank you. <clears throat> All right. From the sunshine state to pretty much anywhere, uh, anywhere off the coast of, of any country near you, area of global dead zones doubling every 10 years. Yes. <clears throat> the number and size of oceanic dead zones is increasing. No shit, Sherlock. The name says it all, but dead zones are areas along the seafloor where oxygen levels are so low they no longer sustain marine life. Hypoxia which is a deficiency in the amount of oxygen reaching the tissues of organisms, is a widespread and growing problem in Earth's oceans as industrial waste, fertilizer runoff from industrial agriculture, and anthropogenic climate disruption increasingly aggravate the crisis. We have crises being aggravated on the planet today. Wow, do you think so? Uh, anyway, this is looking into a new s study from what's left of the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. Uh, there you go. All right, I think we get it. Any one of these could be a new, an entire rant. Many versions of this hopium-inspired horseshit on the mainstream media today. UNESCO, that's, you know, the United Nations, removes Belize Reef from endangered world heritage list. Yes. All right. <clears throat> UNESCO removed the Mesoamerican coral reef in Belize from its list of threatened world heritage sites on Tuesday, praising the Central American country for its visionary steps to protect it. Yes, the reef is the second largest in the world after the Great Barrier Reef in Australia, which is destroyed. Um, it spent nearly a decade on the endangered World Heritage Site list. So anyway, uh, this, this absolute unadulterated uh, descent into hopium-inspired horseshit. So they're talking about, and good for Belize, uh, you know, unlike Australia actually addressing some of the, you know, some of the immediate direct threats to the reef, uh, that governments can have any control over. But of course, 
what nowhere in any of these are well the three versions of this article that I read not one of them mentions climate change and sea level rise and uh, ocean acidification and warming of the ocean you know nowhere in, in, in these articles does it does it talk about uh, how climate change uh, whether it's five years or 50 years are going to take out this reef and the mangroves and everything else just completely ignored. So, so yeah, it, it's taken off the uh, endangered list for, you know, 2018, but it might just be back on it in 2020. Would you get back on your little stage, please? Lay down. I know it's not getting hot through that window because it's a cloudy day like that. <clears throat> anyway, let's move on from that uh, unadulterated horseshit on the uh, mainstream media to uh, several versions of this story. Uh, this is the French news service. Palm oil is decimating wildlife solutions elusive. Oh shit, Sherlock. Do you think so? Uh, I want to show you a picture. This is taken from inside a protected rainforest reserve in Indonesia. Uh, this is a protected rainforest reserve. This is where, of course, on the left is the rainforest, and on the right is what a new palm oil plantation uh, inside a protected reserve in Indonesia looks like. Okay, for those of you who are not aware of this, palm oil production has decimated animal and plant life in Malaysia and Indonesia, and now threatens pristine forest in Central Africa and South America. Uh, a leading conservation group warned on Tuesday, habitat loss due to expanding palm plantations has pushed some of the planet's most iconic species, such as orangutans, tigers, and gibbons, to the brink of extinction, the International Union for the Conservation for Nature said in its new report. And wow, uh, you would never believe this. Uh, a certification system designed to ensure the sustainability of palm oil is, according to the report, quote, far from fulfilling its promises, it noted. No shit, Sherlock. Uh, but there's one problem. Uh, but simply banning new production of palm oil uh, would only shift the problem elsewhere as consumer demand for vegetable oil soars, the report cautioned, and we're going to pick up on a second story. This is how the Independent uh, over there in Zombie Island is reporting it. Ecologically disastrous palm oil here to stay and better than alternatives experts say. Uh, well, you know, guys, this is just one more example of, of frying pan versus the fire, and that we're fucked. This is their picture of a palm oil plantation in, uh, over there in Southeast Asia. <clears throat> Banning production of ecologically disastrous palm oil would only serve to displace biodiversity loss to new areas, the new report has warned. No shit, 
the growth of massive commercial palm oil operations in Indonesia and Malaysia has seen the deforestation of vast tracts of rainforest and caused the decimation of populations of some of the world's most endangered animals, but replacing palm oil with other vegetable oil crops such as soy, rapeseed, or corn would require up to nine times as much land to produce the same amount of oil than palm oil, according to the IUCN. And, you know, guys, this is exactly why we are so completely fucked. Uh, so, you know, then it just becomes the question of, you know, palm oil is particularly centering in on the most biodiverse uh, ecosystems on the planet, which is the, the tropical forest ecosystems. But if it ain't that one, we're just going to take it out of another ecosystem. This once again, this is this bullshit uh, about trying to, uh, to supply to supply the needs of a planet of 10 billion people, uh, it, it can't be done. Anyways, or anybody uh, who does not understand this, anyway, let's go from tropical rainforest in the middle of the planet, let's go to the top of the planet. Many versions of this story. I'm going to just pick out two. Here is part of the Arctic Sea is transitioning into the Atlantic Ocean. Scientists studying one of the fastest warming regions of the global ocean say changes in this region are so sudden and vast that in effect the Arctic Ocean will soon just be another limb of the Atlantic Ocean rather than a characteristically icy Arctic Sea. Um, you're looking here at, at the northern Barents Sea to the north of Scandinavia it has warmed extremely rapidly by 2.7 degrees Fahrenheit just since the year 2000. Uh, little dog. I guess the little dog is done with, uh, with posing. So, uh, anyway, uh, let, let's listen to this from another angle, from New Scientist magazine. Uh, as long as we're talking about the Barents Sea, another way of, of saying the same thing is an entire Arctic ecosystem could vanish within the next decade. The Barents Sea, home to a diverse array of wildlife, could be completely gone in just a few years. Perhaps the most dramatic impact of climate change yet seen. An entire Arctic o ecosystem suddenly started shrinking uh, within the last 10 years and could be gone within another decade. The collapse could be the largest, fastest impact of climate change uh, seen to date. This is some study out of Norway. Uh, quote, it could happen within the next few years or within 10 or 20 years. There you go. Uh, the Barents Sea is a stretch of ocean covering 1.6 million square kilometers. Oh, Jesus. Uh, as long as we're up there in Scandinavia, uh, Brother Max sending us this dispatch from Finland this week. <clears throat> the bleak consequences of the heat wave as much as half 
of Finland's food crop is lost in many places throughout southern Finland after rainfall should have arrived weeks ago. So uh, even though the rains have finally arrived weeks late in Finland, you know, I think when it, several weeks ago it was in the mid-90s in Finland, you know, like it is in Siberia right now as I'm talking, it's like 92 degrees. Uh, the damage is already done. The rains are a little bit too late. So it's a good thing that people in Finland are not uh, dependent on, uh, on Finland to give them their food. This next story, this is someone else I need to, good lord, the list of people that I need to interview. <clears throat> Berkeley Scholar admits that climate change has run its course. Uh, so this is a fellow, uh, this was an op-ed by Stephen Howard in the Wall Street Journal. Uh, and what he's talking about, I, I don't have, I, I need to do a, uh, a full rant on this story. He's not saying by any, on any level, that climate change is over. It, it, it's only going to get worse. Uh, you know, he's not a clueless moron. What this is talking about is how climate change has already, it's just an, another piece of background noise what he calls climate change's descent into social justice identity politics is the last gasp of a cause that has lost its vitality. You know, that climate change, you know, is just one more of the social justice warrior issues. Uh, you know, it's, 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 it's climate change, it's gay rights, it's tranny rights, it's gender issues, it's, uh, what else, capital punishment, it's detention of immigrants that they're t we're taking uh, perhaps the single biggest threat to humanity and the entire planet and it's just become lumped into one more of these little limp dick, uh, lame, lame brained little, uh, little lefties. It's just one more of these little lefty causes and it, it, it's just completely off the off the radar, and certainly what he's, even Al Gore, I didn't, uh, I didn't uh, flag the article, but Al Gore right here in the mainstream media today is talking about this very thing, that climate change as it ramps up and gets gnarlier and gnarlier, that, you know, it's just, uh, what did he say there was a good quote? in here that I wanna, wanted to read. This is a long, involved article. Actually, it's not that long. Uh, here we go. All right. The descent of climate change into the abyss of social justice identity politics represents the last gasp of the cause that has lost its vitality. Climate alarm is like a car alarm. A blaring noise people are tuning out. That's exactly what it is. Anyway, so let's tune out climate change and let's head over to the South China Sea. What is going on in the South China Sea this week? U.S aircraft carrier patrols uh, US aircraft carrier patrols disputed sea amid Chinese buildup. The US military has now deployed 
the third aircraft carrier this year to patrol the disputed South China Sea where Washington has criticized China's military buildup on new made on new man-made islands. All right, this is the 97,000-ton USS Ronald Reagan carrying more than 70 aircraft is now plowing around the South China Sea. There you go. Uh, according to Rear Admiral Mark Dalton, the U.S. military presence in the region, quote, has supported our ability to defend our nation and our allies and promotes our ability to safeguard freedom of the seas, unimpeded commerce, to deter, to deter conflict, and coercion, and promote adherence to rules-based international order. And you will not believe this, some areas of the South China Sea are believed to have undersea deposits of natural gas and oil. No shit, All right, from the South China Sea to the shithole country of Brazil. Uh, there you go. Wow. BH Billiton paves way for some Marco restart after deal with Brazilian court. Uh, there's very few people on the planet who have any clue what this means. So what it's talking about is these goddamn uh, planet eaters down there in Brazil, if you remember a few years ago, where they were, you know, storing all of their crap in, in this toxic sludge pit, and the dam collapsed and completely uh, destroyed uh, like a 200-mile stretch of river in the Amazon jungle, killed a bunch of people and whatnot. I can't believe that was back in uh, a couple of years ago, but in 2015. I can't believe it's taken this long. Mining giant BH Billiton took a big step to reopening its mining operations on Tuesday after striking a deal, striking a deal with Brazilian prosecutors over the 2015 mining disaster. There you go. Um, they're hoping the mine can get back to work, back to work in the first half of next year. All right, here is the mainstream media asking the question, but not answering it. What are police doing with $6 billion worth of military equipment? Well, uh, you know, what are the choices that, what are the cops, what are these small towns doing uh, with these tanks and shit. Uh, what are the choices? Why would small town America police departments be arming themselves with uh, tanks? I will let you figure that out for yourself. I just couldn't, uh, I'm sorry the picture is so small here. This viral photo, George, this is Daddy Bush, shows off his Bill Clinton socks in viral photo. There you go. Two former presidents gathering in Maine were not father and son. They were Republican and Democrat and former 
former competitors. But Bill Clinton visited Daddy Bush at his home in Maine, not too far from here, yesterday, and a photo posted on Twitter shows the nation's 41st and 42nd president sharing a moment as Bush shows off a pair of Bill Clinton socks. Yes. Daddy Bush tweeted, special visit today with a great friend. Do you think so? Bill Clinton ended Bush's plans for re-election in 1992. That was no, George Bush ended his own plans for re-election in 1992, but both Daddy Bush and his son, George W. Bush, are now friends with Bill Clinton. No shit, Sherlock. Is there anybody, uh, is there anybody who does not understand that Bill, Bill and Hillary Clinton are, are, have always been best friends with Daddy and Baby Bush. There is no fucking difference between the Bushes and the Clintons. And, but one thing I guess they share in common is the Bushes and the Clintons both despise Donald Trump. Uh, there you go. So uh, at least Donald Trump is not friends with the Bushes or the Clintons. As George Carlin would say, it is one big club and you aren't a member or whatever that quote was. You ain't invited. Anyway, what is up with Barbie this week? From Bill Clinton to Barbie. Barbie has a new career as a robotics engineer. Barbie has a brand new job. In the latest iteration of the Beloved Toys Career of the Year line for 2018, Barbie has taken up a career as a robotics engineer. The iconic doll comes with all the tools of her new trade. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Uh, let's see. Robotics Engineer Barbie comes with a doll-sized laptop computer, a tiny robot with movable arms, and accessorizes her casual look with safety goggles. It's also worth noting that Barbie has swapped her high heels for sensible flats to make it easier to work in a laboratory all day. There you go. Uh, so it's all part of Barbie's becoming a toy for little girls dreaming of careers in stem cells or perhaps being a robot, a robot engineer when they grow up. Yes. Uh, anyway, the brainy Barbie, who comes in four skin tones, is available online for $14. But we're going to wind up in... Uh, and I don't even know where this was. I think it might have been Houston, Texas. Manicure Meltdown. Yeah, Houston, Texas. Manicure Meltdown. Customer angry about her fake nails causes more than $2,000 in damages to nail salon. The manager says the woman who is angry about her newly polished fake nails went on a rampage causing 
$2,000 in damage to his salon because her fake nails were not up to her expectations. And anybody who does not understand why I am wrapping up a doom and gloom headline with that story from Houston, Texas, I do not have time to explain it to you now. But it is a fine day in the green mountains of Vermont where all is perfect. And I need to get out there and, I don't know, take a walk in the woods and maybe get the little dog in a kayak. Maybe we will go kayaking in the end times. Bye, guys.